Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Dead Reckoning again, but this time we're going to make it a little more difficult and we're going to introduce wind. Not just any wind though, but a nice quartering headwind to make things interesting for us. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you remember from the last video, uh, we basically created a little scenario where we're over here in uh, right over San Juan, Puerto Rico. We went to this nice little swamp and kind of made our way over to an intersection. We did that completely without any wind. Uh, we went through the process of calculating my speed, which is making me slightly insane right now because it's like goofing up a bit. I think the reason it's doing that, hang on, let me see if I can ungoof that real fast. Uh, you could say it's ungoofed. <laughs> we went through the process of calculating everything and we're gonna do that again today. So let's mix things up to uh, make it very challenging for us. So I'm gonna go up to weather. Uh, this is great and all, I like this. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna go ahead and have this kind of, I call it regular weather. <laughs> the reason I call it regular weather is uh, where I live, this seems to be the weather all the time. So we're gonna go ahead and set that up so that's pretty good to go. Uh, we have our wind, we have a bit of a, uh, not a tailwind here, watch out. Remember, we're traveling towards the south. We're actually pushing this way. So there's actually a bit of a headwind. So we're gonna make this fairly substantial. I'm gonna make this uh, 15 knots, which um, anybody who's actually flown will tell you 15 knots is nothing. We're gonna disable gusts today in order to make things a little bit safer. And we know the wind is coming out of 242, which is pretty typical. I'm actually gonna bring it around from, let's make it a little bit closer to west. I'll call it from 270, there we go. And you can see my airspeed is panicking right now because remember our indicated airspeed is going to be affected by wind obviously true airspeed is not affected by wind but ground speed is affected by wind boy let's get started so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go over to here to my e6b calculator oh, this is a great tool again e6bx i have one of these that i can use so here we go let's dial in our numbers so we know that our course is going to be 213 degrees so we're going to do 213 uh, if you're wondering by the way where i got the 213 from uh, we calculated it last time uh, the 213 is right here so you can see that oh there's my mistake 12.6 ah, i was off by a mile when i calculated Oh, well, uh, true airspeed. We don't know our true airspeed yet, but we did calculate it last time. So what I'm actually going to do is come down here. I indicated uh, true airspeed calculator. We're at 2,500 feet. Outside air temperature is 10 degrees. Our indicated airspeed is 114. That gets us a task of 118. 118. The wind direction is 270. So I'm going to dial in 270. And our wind speed is a total of 15 knots, which now says our wind correction angle is now 6 degrees. What does 6 degrees mean? That means we add our course, which is our magnetic course in this case, to the 6 degrees to get the direction we have to actually point the plane in order to safely get to our destination. That means our actual final heading is going to be 219, even though our aircraft is going to be traveling along the ground at 213, 213. We're also going to get a ground speed of 109. So what we have to do now is dial in our distance and now we're going to see that this is going to take us just shy of seven minutes in order to get to our destination so let's go ahead and uh, put the 219 into the uh, computer let's go ahead and get our timer all ready to go so we know that this is going to take just about seven minutes so i'm going to come up to here I'll go ahead and give this a wiggle we'll say six minutes one two three four five six we're going to go over to here and we're actually going to go uh, what would we say 656 i think is what it said 656 enter and then we're going to say we're counting down this is important so that to down Looks good, and we're gonna to set to the start button. Now we're gonna go ahead and tell our magnetic heading to immediately go to 219 degrees. If we do not set the 219 now, well, this is gonna give us all sorts of fun problems later. By the way, the wind is indicated at 29 knots right now for some reason, so I'm actually gonna go take a look at that real quick and uh, see what the deal with that is. If I bring this down to my 15 knots, what magical number do I need to get here? It looks like I need to be exactly half. That's interesting. Interesting. Oh, I just did 75 knots. That was a mistake. Let's try 7.5 knots. There we go. <laughs> I believe I just stalled my airplane. It'll catch up eventually. I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so this is good to go. 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 All right, let's unpause and see what happens. Boop. So what's going to do is our airplane is now going to push itself into the wind, which is coming from this direction, so that it's able to travel on that straight line along the ground. Oh, let's give it some power here. We're not going to touch anything until we get up to that uh, previous speed here. And like I said, we're going to use our lake as our starting point, and we're going to use that intersection that we saw last time. Uh, for those of you who did not see last time, we're going to be interested in hitting this point right here after having across this point. Now, not only are we going to have challenges laterally, which is going to be our left and right, we're also going to have uh, new problems here because of that crosswind prevents us from being able to travel in that straight line that we had desired so much. Notice, by the way, that your GPS display shows no crab angle here. It shows that we're going in a straight line, even though if you look at us vertically, let's see if you can see this okay. I'm going to go straight down. See how the aircraft is being pushed in the direction of my mouse right now? The reason it's doing that is on account of the fact that the wind is coming from this direction. So even though we're not pointing in the direction we're traveling, we are still traveling in the direction we're traveling. You know, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> let's go ahead and reduce the power a little bit. 
Keep in mind, if I travel too fast here, it's going to shift me to the right. If I travel too slow, it's going to shift me to the left. Again, nobody said flying was easy. It just, like I said, keeps things very, very interesting for us. Let's go ahead and I'll give it just a little bit more reduction of power here. Again, we only need to be going rippity rip here. So we'll get down to our 114, which is going to give us our 118 true airspeed. Actually, our true airspeed is going to be significantly less than that. Our true airspeed is, I'm sorry, ground speed is going to be about 109. So I'm noticing that my ground speed is 113 right now, even though my TAS, which means my winds are not working correctly. So what I'm going to do real quickly is before I get myself in trouble, is I'm just going to confirm to make sure the wind makes sense. So that's a 15 knot. It's showing a 16 knot, but my ground speed is showing 112 interesting so unfortunately like i said that could definitely mess us up so we got to be careful with that so again more places where even though we calculated something perfectly you're going to be affected by some variable that you might not have control over so again you want to always combine dead reckoning with other forms of navigation this is you can reliably do it so we're right about to cross the lake you can see we're still right on course even though otherwise we're going to go ahead and press the enter key so now we're going to start counting down uh, towards our destination. So remember, the wind's coming from here. It's pushing us this way. So we're pointing the plane into this wind by six degrees. Of course, look at the gusts. Love it. So now that we have the ability to basically travel in a across the ground in a straight line, even though the plane itself, especially when we looked at it from above, is clearly not pointing in a straight line. And again, that's what makes uh, aviation so much more fun. So what I will do is I'll go ahead and uh, fast forward to when we get a little bit closer to our destination so you can see how accurate this can be with a complicated wind. All right, we've got about 30 seconds to go or so before our crossing our waypoint here. A couple things that are worth noting. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is the fact that our airspeed has progressively hiked upwards during this uh, little journey here. Obviously, as you pick up speed, more air comes through the propeller, it's going to accelerate. So I've actually been having to kind of go to war with this thing this entire time. The other thing worth noting is the fact that this aircraft keeps getting bounced around. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator does simulate ridge lift to an extent, well, not ridge lift, ridge turbulence, let's call it. So we're getting bounced around in this uh, mountain range pretty aggressively here, even though our wind speed has stayed more or less constant so we have about two seconds that we just passed let's go ahead and pause and let's see exactly how we did here so we're about two seconds over here so looking out behind us uh, you can see clearly that uh, we are actually significantly closer so if i actually pull this down you can switch back to desktop view you can see i uh, remember i did stop two seconds late so uh, we can see here that we are slightly off in this direction we can see we're slightly off in this direction as well let's go ahead and measure our distance here it looks like we're um, a little bit better on distance keep in mind we had that airspeed issue though and of course if we uh, swing the suck around laterally and look at how much uh, we've actually hurt here we've only gained about a tenth of a nautical mile of distance even though we had a significant win which was actually significantly unpredictable for us but realistically we should have been right here we're over here so it's just very very interesting to see the difference between the two uh, one of the things i realized when i was looking back over at the flight plan is we started the timer late which is one of the reasons why we got this extra distance but you can see even with wind and even doing our math carefully we're able to very very accurately locate a point without actually knowing where this point is using any sort of electronic navigation and that's one of the reasons dead reckoning is so powerful and like i said last time I was mentioning that dead reckoning is usually combined with pilotage or other things to allow us to identify where this is. Now, in the real world, I would stop my timer when I cross this, took a look at how early or late I was, and then use that as a way to estimate what my next position is going to be. Obviously, this is for a combat mission, and we need to use this town over here as a waypoint. We would use dead reckoning to get close enough to find the town, and then we'd start circling, looking for the town, until we're able to be called onto a strike. So hopefully this encourages you to give dead reckoning a try. If you're curious as to why I've been playing with this particular system, uh, you'll see in the next video. But other than that, enjoy.